Mean charge. I could take a mean charge. And here comes South Carolina. <laughs> Fans, let's meet the Gamecocks at guard, a junior from Lexington, South Carolina. will have their first practice. UConn gets the second practice, so we'll have all access coverage with them as well. At guard, a sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, Number two, Anaya Russell. At guard, senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Number three, Destiny Henderson. At forward, a junior from St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. Number four, Aaliyah Boston. At forward, a senior from Rome, Georgia. Number five, Victoria Saxton. At center, a sophomore from Montes Claros, Brazil. Number 10, Camila Cardoso. At guard, a senior from San Diego, California. Number 11, Destiny Littleton. At guard, a junior from Rock Island, Illinois. Number 12, Bree Bill. At forward, a junior from Kusawa, Ontario, Canada. Number 15, Leticia Amihir. At forward, a freshman from Ellenwood, Georgia. Number 20, Sonia Fagan. At guard, a freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Number 23, Bree Hall. At guard, a graduate student from Durham, North Carolina. Number 24, Lily Grissett. At guard, a freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. Number 25, Raven Johnson. Forward a senior from Charleston, South Carolina. Number 32, Alyssa Wesselek. And a guard, a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina. Number 44, Sanaya Rivers. The assistant coaches for the Gamecocks are Jolette Law and Fred Shamil, the associate head coach, Lisa Boyer, and your head coach for the South Carolina Gamecocks, Don Staley. So there you go. All of the introductions have officially been made, and now you see us sitting and our rightful place, at least mine, on the desk. No one wants me on a basketball court, not even close. Um, we're so excited to be here with you guys because this is the first of its kind for the women's tournament. We have seen these all-access type of practices in the ramp up to the men's championship. And part of the equity review was making sure that the women get that set. And listen, 
We're talking about practice, and they still showed up. The fans are here, so kudos to them. Yes, yes, it's a fantastic yes. crowd to see South Carolina practice first, and then UConn. Again, we're going to be joined by different guests. We've got some fantastic coaches, um, and we're really excited for you guys to stick around with us. It's going to be a couple of hours, and it's going to be super loose because that's the benefit of being on ESPN Plus and on digital. Things can get really weird. But you know what? <laughs> you got the look. You got the Wait, we're still not allowed to say. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I want to start by talking about this South Carolina team, a team that has been the AP number one wire to wire, right? Whenever we see this, in fact, other, what, 12 instances of seeing this, that team has gone on 11 times to win the national championship. We had questions at the beginning of the tournament about their offense, about whether they were coming in with the same amount of momentum that some of the other teams had been after losing in the SEC championship. Do you feel like the last couple of games have answered what you need to see from South Carolina? I'll start with you, Coach. Absolutely, I yeah. think that it has. And the thing that they've done really well is they've taken their defense up another level. Mm -hmm. And then offensively, they've got a good balance from their guards and their post. It's not just the Aaliyah Boston show. The guards are able to attack. They're taking shots within their offense, their expected shots. And what does that do? That puts you in good position to get offensive rebounds. The other thing that South Carolina is doing is they're making players uncomfortable. Yeah. They are taking away what they um, consider their best move, and then they're forcing them to go to their counters. And that's why their defense is so effective, is for the mere fact that they scout, and they're saying, look, these are the things that we have to do. We're gonna, we're gonna disrupt you, not only offensively with Aaliyah Boston, but we're gonna also disrupt you through our defensive effort. Speaking of scouting, we heard Louisville say yesterday after their game, they executed South Carolina, their game plan perfectly. Dre, I want to show this highlight. I just, for the people that missed this game yesterday, I want you to sort of walk through what you're seeing in this game that we saw last night, the first of the semi matchups between South Carolina and Louisville. So let's get you that highlight and we'll have you just talk over sort of what you saw. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that you probably won't see on the highlight was the way that South Carolina broke Louisville's press. But also, I mean, I just thought so Louisville, mind you, they came out aggressive. Sure. They got down, they were able to fight back. Emily Inksler is a leader, she's a fighter. She played her absolute heart out. The thing is, I think Louisville played extremely hard. They just didn't have an answer. They didn't have an answer for Aaliyah Boston. They didn't have an answer for South Carolina's perimeter defenders. The length that they have on the perimeter made things really difficult for Haley Van Lith, who's a phenomenal scorer. I thought South Carolina was really disciplined, their athleticism and their length, and Aaliyah Boston made the difference. We heard Haley Van Lith say that in the postgame. She was like, I literally couldn't even get a shot off. They right. were just smothering me defensively and that you're talking about a player that had four straight 20 plus point games coming into last night she didn't get her seven foot she didn't get her first bucket until right before the half reveal that's all i gotta say <laughs> i was gonna say can it i no, no 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 you need to say what she was actually saying yesterday while i was watching this game you would think Bree Bill's middle name is Mother Busting based on how many times y'all said it. My mama's watching. Bree Mother Busting Bri Bill is what you said time and time again. How impressive was she last night? When Bree Bill was they guarding yeah, Haley Van Lith, she yeah. was one for six from the floor. And Bree Bill was the primary defender yeah. on Bree Bill and the leading scorer for Louisville wasn't able to get her shot off. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, you know one thing that as a, as a former coach, I did not like when players would go, my bad, my bad. Yep. She had no my bad. Yeah. She did not mess up mm -hmm. in her defensive assignment. And so she was able to take, again, a very, very good score in Van Lith out of the game because she wasn't over there like, mm, my bad. Yep. <laughs> and the one bucket that Haley Van Lith had, give her credit because it was the drive, the fake, the up and under, and then a lengthy finish on the opposite side. It wasn't an easy no. bucket that she scored yeah. on Brie Beal. And what's impressive about Brie Beal is the way she's able to move at her size, right? Yeah. Like she is so strong, she's got such great size, but she's got lateral quickness, she keeps her feet moving, she never gets stuck. I mean, one of my favorite, the, my favorite defender in the nation to watch because she does it the right way. Louisville only shot seven free throws. Yeah. So South Carolina played yeah. defense without fouling, and yeah. Free Bill is a great example of that. Well, when, you watch, when you watch Free Bill, watch her eyes. Yeah. Because she defends like a point guard passes a pass ahead. She defends mm -hmm. a play ahead. She anticipates uh, vision. what her person is going to do, mm -hmm. and then she's there and beats him to those spots. Yeah. Well, let's check in with the queen of storylines, Holly Rowe, who I think has more on Free Bill. 
Well, you know, Brie Beal came into this South Carolina program as part of a huge recruiting class with a lot of other stars. And early in her career, John Staley sat her down and watched film with her and said, I think you can be an elite defender. Brie actually told me today, I never saw that in myself. When I grew up, I was always the biggest player. I would play in the post. I would score. But I didn't see myself as an elite defender until Don Staley showed me that I could be one. She said, now I pride myself on watching film. When I asked her how she was able to shut down Haley Van Lip, first we talked about the block. She's like, oh, I really did that. I set the tone early in the game, and I was proud of myself for doing that. She said, the reason I'm able to do that and make those shot blocks is because I had watched film. I could sense when Haley's going up for her shot because I know how she moves on the court. She had seen that through her own personal film study leading up to that game. And Brie Beal has now embraced that role as a great defender. And she said, I'm proud of myself. This is a new identity for me, but I think it's one that is making our team better. Let me tell you, Holly, Don Staley told me that Brie Beal studies her opponent like you are in a relationship. You go through the Instagram, you go through the Twitter. <laughs> she stalks, like, she stalks her, who she's going to have to guard. Yep. Yep. I love that, that kind of preparation. I, I talked to Coach Staley about Brie Beal her freshman year and, and about her recruiting, and she said in the beginning, I didn't really know what I liked about her. I just, I liked her. I liked what she brought. And then the more that she watched Brie Beal game after game after game, she said, I need all of my players to be like Brie Beal because it's not just one huge thing that stands out. It's the way she goes about her business. She carries, the way she plays the game, it's like a grown woman. She just goes about it like it's a business and gets it done. It's really impressive. It's interesting too, because uh, when Don Staley joined us on set yesterday in the halftime of the second game, she said that. She said, if people on the national stage were not familiar with Brie Bill before last night, they certainly are now. And the stage only gets bigger from here. We have shown a lot of love to Brie Beal, and we should. But let's be real, okay? <laughs> South Carolina runs on Boston. <laughs> Aaliyah Boston, the Naismith Player of the Year. For so long, we were sort of following this double-double streak, right? It ended at, what, 26 consecutive double-doubles? 27. 27 consecutive double-doubles. That ended in their game against Creighton. She got right back to business yesterday. Tell the people at home why so many people and not even so many, almost everyone agrees that she is the most dominant player in basketball. She's the most dominant player in basketball because she has the dominant mentality. It starts with how you approach competition and she approaches it every single night with this mentality of, I cannot be denied the greatness that is, is being bestowed upon me right now. Her ability to score in traffic, it starts with her footwork. She's able to look, assess, and then she's gonna read. She's one of those players that can read the defense, and then she sees the double team, she do what? She'll kick it right back out. Uh -huh. So that to me is a complete player. Look, she's second in a single season of 29 double-doubles, yes. second only to Tierra McCowan. Yep. But let me tell you, the other thing that, and Drea, you are a fitness fool. <laughs> not like crazy. Yes, but this is another thing that Aaliyah Boston did in the offseason. She got herself in great shape. She worked on other aspects of her game, expanding it, becoming more comfortable taking the outside shot. All of the physical things that you could do increased her speed, increased her uh, weightlifting. But the other thing that Aaliyah Boston did is she changed her mentality. And you're right, Nikki, she talked about being, not just talked about, implemented, being dominant. And that was something that is not, that's not natural for Aaliyah Boston because she's such a nice person. And changing the switch, of that, the switch on that when you get on the court, it ain't easy, and you have to make it a habit. I think the play that showed it all in one was when she's under the basket, she goes up, there's three people around her, she gets her own rebound. Mind you, after working to get the first shot, right? Then she gets her own rebound, three people are around her, she's got the patience, and then she finds review on the opposite side. You know how many post players would be exhausted after just just getting the rebound and feeling three people around you. It's mentally tiring, it's physically tiring. Because she's got that dominant mindset and the conditioning to go with it, she can make another play. I mean, it, it all fits together to make her the player she is. It's funny, Holly, because when we uh, talked to Dawn Staley about Aaliyah a few days ago in media availability, she talked about the fact that when she sort of walked her in AAU, she was like, she obviously was not the player she is now. But the one thing I noticed about her, she never, ever stopped moving, not yep. a single time. What you got, Holly? Well, I want to give a shout out to her coach in the Virgin Islands, Coach Bruley, and he really saw something special in her when she was a young kid. He would bring her to the court
court early, and I went to the court where she grew up playing elementary school basketball. It's uneven, it's rocky, it's kind of on a hill, and, and she grew up in less than ideal conditions. You know, this was not uh, your typical AAU travel ball situation until she was 12 years old, and so I think she's learned how to adapt to a lot of different situations. She was shooting the ball outside. She played outside almost all of her career, so she is adjusting her shot in the wind. Mm -hmm. She's playing in the sun. Sometimes it rained. So she's had to go through a lot of different types of basketball. It wasn't always perfect and pretty, and we see that in her game. When stuff goes wrong, she never panics. And Carolyn, I want to throw it back to you with this story. You know, I was able to meet her dad's best friend, and I know you you connected with Tim Duncan with him. Um, we went to his bar where he's got all these Tim Duncan jerseys, and it's all this ode to Tim Duncan in this bar in the Virgin Islands. And we were there the day they put up Aaliyah Boston's jersey right next to Tim. But, you know, she went and worked out with him, and I know you have a lot more on what she gained from working out with another famous person from the islands. Yeah, I talked to Tim Duncan, and Tim told me that Aaliyah Boston came down at his house, because, of course, he has a gym in his house. Of course. Yeah. And <laughs> I said, place. you know, when Aaliyah came down there, what did she want to work on? And he said it was more organic. Said they first just started talking about fitness and conditioning, and then they just started like knocking around, playing on the floor, and then she let he just let her ask questions and talking about spacing and awareness, where the defense is going to come from, because that was the next level for her is understanding you are the best player in the country, and you are going to attract everybody's attention. So when you get that attention, don't panic. Don't rush. Do the opposite. You, 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 you literally welcome it. You do. I mean, it's really a compliment, yeah. right? Yeah. That, oh, my gosh, they got a double, triple team me. And so you want that. You want to welcome it and embrace it and own it. And she owns it every single time. So that's why you never see her rattle. No. You never see her get frustrated. Right. Because she said this is a part of the journey. This is a part of what great players. She's not good. She's great. Mm -hmm. And yes. she, and the other thing, I just want to add this one more point about Leah Boston. She is the most humble uh, young woman Sweet. that that I've met that has this mm -hmm. stardom. Mm -hmm. And I was looking or reading something, and, and, and it talked about um, being very humble and how that, to me, gives her this calmness because she she lives in the world of appreciation mm -hmm. versus entitlement. Her mom and daddy. Oh, That's where I, that comes from. I think, well, Carolyn, just going off of your story with Tim Duncan, I think it says a lot about Aaliyah Boston that she's she's cerebral as well. Like, how many players get with someone and get with a pro and they say, hey, you just put me through some drills. You show me what I need to do, right? But for her to think through and ask her own questions for what she needs to become a better player. That's her basketball IQ. She's a thinker. She thinks the game. She knows herself, very self-aware. I mean, it's a remarkable story for her to work with him and not him just teach her things. She, yeah, sur she surrounds herself with the right people. Yeah. And after talking to Tim Duncan, he was a little reluctant to talk about just what he has done with her mm -hmm. because he didn't want to take credit for that. Yeah. He said it's all about mm -hmm. Aaliyah. So, yeah, they, that's where the two, I said, what what makes you guys, what are you similar? And he said, we're basketball players. That's the only similarity. She is her person, I am mine. He took no credit for the improvement of Aaliyah Boston. Can we, can we put that graphic back up, Jocelyn? When you hear me refer to Jocelyn, I'm talking to our fantastic director that's in the truck. That graphic we just showed of Aaliyah Boston in the last three games, right? Just sort of, again, just sort of encapsulates. Yeah, it takes a second, no problem. I told you, it's loose and goose on uh, on ESPN+. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about how dominant she's been in these last three games, right? right. Averaging <laughs> over 23 points a game. Shooting almost 70% from the field. Averaging over 15 rebounds per game. But here's the thing, that's all well and good, and that's in the past, because that's what she's done in the last three games. Now she's facing UConn and Gino Ariema, a guy who has never lost in the national championship. Don Staley hasn't either, but Gino's been there 11 times, <laughs> right? What does she have to do on Sunday to continue the dominance and help, help, help South Carolina to their second national championship? Well, I think the biggest thing that she has to do is what do what she's done all season long. Okay. She doesn't need to try to do too much. Oh, it's the national championship game. I got to, like, freak out and be a superstar. No. You do what you do. The composure. She brings the calmness on the floor to her team. So she just needs to continue to be dominant, de demand the basketball, and really, too, Go to the rim because remember Connecticut, they got two post players right yep. now because Dorka Uhas is out. So can can she get Connecticut's post game in foul trouble? I, I, the other thing that she did a phenomenal job of, and, now, and we know that she can score the basketball when the ball's given to her. 
but her ability, Andrea, like you mentioned, to get other players involved. She had four assists in the game yesterday, and she's a player that, I'm. I, yes, I want the touches, but the, not every time do you need to shoot it, and she understands the difference of great shot selection. One of my favorite things about her as well that I, I just have no doubt she'll bring it and she'll do it is her activity level opens up not only scoring opportunities, but offensive rebounding opportunities elsewhere, right? Because if you send someone to help on her, they're out of position to rebound defensively. So Victoria Saxon can crash the glass. Leticia and me here can crash the glass. If two people are boxing out Aaliyah Boston or trying to keep her from the boards, which we've seen, somebody else can crash in there and get the rebound. So even if it's not her getting rebounds, her activity gives her teammates opportunity. They're a team rebounding. They rebound well as a team, and it's her activity. But here's the thing. South Carolina has got to have all five players move, so the double team doesn't always know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. If you just plant Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxton on the block, mm -hmm. then the defense can always rotate in. But after that, if you keep all five players moving, yep. they got to guess, and that leaves either driving lanes yep. or lanes for Aaliyah Boston. This is how you know you're dominant. We actually, in our research department at ESPN, had someone go and watch every single one of Aaliyah Boston's <laughs> games and break down what she scores depending on her hair color. Carter and Jenny, who are fantastic researchers who literally keep us alive. Carter, what was it when she wears the pink and the, and the purple? I'm gonna give you a minute to pull it up um, because that's literally where we're at. <laughs> 18 points a game and 15 rebounds a game when she is wearing purple and pink hair. So again, <laughs> she said she knew that. Someone sent her that graphic and she loved it. Remember when we were talking with her in the media available, we were like, did you know someone actually watched all of your games and broke it down by hair color? Holly, do you have more on her hair? Of so, course you, you know, do, We Holly. talk a lot about her hair and everybody right. knows that that's what she's been. For her freshman year, she came in with colorful braids. And so I always ask her why. Yeah. She's like, I just got so tired as a kid of everybody like, oh, you're tall. Do you play basketball? I just thought it would be a nice opener for another type of conversation. So now it's more like, oh, I love your colorful braids. Instead of the same old question about basketball. So this is her. Um, what do you call those when it's an open greeting, when it's like the, the, the warmer, the fluffer question or whatever? Yeah. This is her way of making it uh, about more than just basketball. So I love that. This is why she does the colorful braids. Oh, that's awesome. And she had told us at game day, right, that she, so it's usually a surprise. Like she just sort of lets her hairstylist choose what color that it's going to be. Because we thought she was trolling Tennessee by wearing the orange chair when we were at game day and they were playing Tennessee. She said that wasn't the case at all. So Aaliyah Boston, South Carolina, they are in the national championship for the second time. This is the matchup a lot of people expected that we would see when this tournament started. She is the player most people thought would win all of the awards and she has. Aaliyah Boston has been an absolute revelation in this tournament and all year long as we officially say hello here at the All Access Practice. I'm Elle Duncan, she's Andrea Carter, she's Carolyn Peck, she is Nikki Fargus. We're so excited to be here with you today. Fantastic crowd, this is the first of its kind. All Access exclusivity. We're gonna have UConn coming up next, but we wanna talk about what we saw yesterday from South Carolina. The AP number one wire to wire team. They were streaking towards the national championship. We wondered a couple of rounds into the tournament. We knew their defense would be fantastic. We wondered if the offense would come around. Have they alleviated any concerns based on what you've seen over the last couple of games? No, they've only gotten better. Yeah. And the one consistent factor yeah. has been Aaliyah Boston. Yes. And Aaliyah Boston has been able to be dominant in the paint. She has commanded the basketball and she's gotten it in a number of different ways. She's gotten on the glass. She has posted up and scored over double teams and triple teams. But you know what else she has done? Is she has been able to involve the rest of her team. The rest of our teammates? You're yeah. talking about Destiny Henderson? Yeah. Zy Cook? <laughs> that, those two was lighting them up from the three-point line? I thought that Aaliyah Boston found her teammates. I thought that they did a great job of knocking down shots to alleviate. But you talked about the movement, right? And you've got a 6'5 player that's stepping out and shooting threes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. Look, she shot 68% over the last three games. Unreal. But her she's knocking down threes like the guards should be knocking them down. <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. Everything she does just looks so effortless because she puts the time in. She spends so much time working on her game. Her skill set is well-rounded. There's not one thing she can't do. It's impressive. Aaliyah led both teams in points, rebounds, and assists in that game last night against Louisville. She's just the third player since 2000, in the last 22 seasons, to lead both teams in points, rebounds, and assists in a Final Four game or later. Holly, when we say dominant, we mean it. <laughs>
Holly? Well, guys, we talk about Aaliyah Boston and how efficient she's been. She actually leads the nation in player efficiency rating. She has been so dominant on both offensive and defensive ends of the floor. The only player in the country in the top 20 of win shares for offense and defense. So why, what does that mean? How does that translate? She is a consensus basketball player winner of every single award, the Wade Trophy, the Naismith All-America Trophy, the U.S. Basketball Writers Association, and the AP Player of the Year. She has been one of the most dominant award winners we've ever seen in this sport with the names like Brianna Stewart, Simone Augustus, Maya Moore. She is with the elite of the elite. And it's just really beautiful to see because she is unaffected, unbothered. She's a low ego player that is a great teammate. And she said, all I care about is winning. And she's doing it on both ends of the floor to be special for this South Carolina team. Consensus, all everything. And oh yeah, I don't want to forget, Academic All-American of the Year. And one of the most humble, right, players that we've known. We've got much more here from the all-access practice as UConn is next. With that, we send it back to Reese Davis in the game day group. Who's Bazette? Ah, ah, I'm gonna stop rapping. But what do you want me to do? They're playing Dr. Dre. It's all well and good. We are back at the All Access practice here with South Carolina. You're looking at Don Staley and a really nice crowd here at the Target Center here to support their team. South Carolina right now, UConn coming up as well. They had their close practices, but now they're opening things up uh, to the public. This is something that we've seen on the men's side. We're doing it for the first time on the women's side. So we're so glad that you're joining us. We'll be here with you for the next couple of hours. So. Settle on in. We've shown a lot of love to Aaliyah Boston, and rightfully so, because she is absolutely fantastic. But we had been saying time and time and time again, when I say we, I mean Nikki Fargus <laughs> had been saying, shockingly, that when it came to South Carolina, it was going to come down to guard play. How impressed have you been with what you've seen from Destiny Henderson and Zaya Cook? When the ball is in Destiny Henderson's hand, mm -hmm. Watch out, because it's like a track meet, right? <laughs> I mean, she plays downhill, mm -hmm. she's aggressive to the rack, and she's now making plays with the ball in her hand. That's something that she's gotten better at. But when she's making shots, you know, when they was running some of that overload action, and they were running her to the baseline, she was getting in that corner yeah. against that one two, 2 that Louisville was running, she knew that this play action is for me this time. And so now you've got your point guard now swinging to your shooting guard, and she's able to knock those shots down, Carolyn. It just opens up. It's like the parting of the sea. And I thought you were going to say something like sign of the times. <laughs> well, I was going to say she's fast like a little red Corvette, but it's all well and good. Um, Drea, when we talked to her, um, in the media availability a few days back. That's what she said. She talked about her speed and just her biggest, you know, uh, goal for her team was to know when to put people in the position that they wanted, but also when to know when to go fast and slow. What have you seen from her? Well, one, Destiny Henderson is faster with the ball in her hands than some people are without the basketball <laughs> in their hands. Like someone going on a dead sprint still probably can't beat Destiny Henderson with the ball. Incredible skill set. I thought her decision making against Louisville, whether she was going to pass and find her teammates or take her own shot. What it makes me think of, honestly, and Carolyn, I know you can speak to this, is her time playing behind Ty Harris. Because Ty Harris is one of the greatest point guards that Don Staley has ever had. National championship winning point guard. And Destiny Henderson played behind Ty and had to learn and had to watch. And I see that same sense of the game that Destiny plays with, that Ty played with. It's, that's what it reminds me of. Well, I think she benefited from playing behind Ty Harris. And now you see in her senior season, yep. Knowing when to go fast and when to go slow. When to open her mouth. We asked her in Greensboro, 
Destiny, I hear you talking a whole lot. Zaya Cook spoke up and said, because now she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she has learned a lot. But the thing that Destiny Henderson has done so well is push this team in transition. You talk about the speed. Dre, she has your kind of foot speed. Yeah. And, but when she gets it and goes, there are spots on the floor that she looks for, her target, where she measures how many people are there. Oh, there's not enough? I'm going by you. And then she decides, do I pull up for the jumper? Do I go all the way in? Do I have somebody else down the floor? Her court vision mm -hmm. has expanded, and that's made her a better point guard. So you mentioned who she played under. Mm -hmm. She also plays for yep. Dawn Stanley. Yep. And Dawn is, you, you can see the patience that she has with her because that is not an easy position, the point guard, to play. And especially when you're playing for one of the greatest point guards in Dawn Staley. So yeah. I commend her also for taking on that leadership responsibility and owning when the team isn't playing well, mm -hmm. because it always goes to the point guard, and when the team is not playing good. So kudos to this kid, because she has worked her tail off to get to this point. And maybe most importantly, she's not only a great basketball player, she also has a clothing lot. So kids, anything is possible mm -hmm. if you put your mind to it. God. <laughs> It's, listen, it's not on television, but you're still going to get these terrible puns. I can't call it a dad joke, but... <laughs> it's definitely a dad joke. Holly Rowe is with uh, our, offici our, our officiating crew, our broadcasting crew. We're going to hear them tomorrow. You guys are not officials at all, Ryan Rucco and Rebecca Lobo, and I know that. We'll hear them on the call tomorrow. They've been fantastic. Uh, they do fancy themselves the officiating crew from time to time, and they know the rules very well. But, uh, no, it is our broadcast crew, of course. And, you know, we're talking about Destiny Henderson. Uh, they're talking about how Don Staley can be tough on a point guard. So I want to go to you. You played with Don Staley on the Olympic team. What was she like as a player, and how has she infused that into people that play for her at that same position? She was tough uh, when you were on her team. You know, she is such a competitor, never uh, liked to lose. And so similar to what we see her out here when she's coaching her players, she could coach her teammates in that same way, uh, you know, with that scowl that you see on her face, but all because she wants people to be great, and she's such a competitor, she wants to win. And she's gotten a lot out of Destiny Henderson. Ryan, we saw a moment today at the closed portion of practice. She got on Destiny. But what I really liked is Destiny immediately corrected things and, and was great. It is a very good relationship. Yeah, I think um, I think when I think about Destiny, she reminds me a little bit of sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. And you look at the way that South Carolina plays, especially in the front court, and it puts a different sort of lens on their guards, right? And so because they're not quite of the same elk of Aliyah Boston, sometimes you forget that they could still be really good. That's how I look at Destiny Henderson. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe there's been moments throughout the tournament where she's struggled, and maybe she's never going to be as dominant as Aliyah is for the team, but she's still really good. And we were talking about it earlier, how we see her as a good pro as well. And, you know, I've also, we've seen firsthand her perform really well on the biggest stage. You know, she was doing everything she could in the semifinal last year to beat Stanford. Uh, and then showed up in a massive way against Louisville in the semifinal this year. So I think obviously like UConn's guards are going to have to win that battle in order to win this game. But to just assume it's going to be an easy one, I don't think is right because destiny is that good in these moments. So I just want to get your quick, I know it's early, you haven't dug into this matchup quite yet, but tell me your early thoughts on this matchup for the national championship. Well, I think Aaliyah Boston is going to be Aaliyah Boston. It's what she's been all season long. She's going to be a dominant force inside. I think for South Carolina, their guards just need to be as efficient as they were in the last game. They shot almost 50% from the floor, and they made really good decisions. Talking about destiny, you know, maybe has a shot early, passes it up, lets the offense work before she gets it back. But I feel like they've done a really good job in their decision making. You know what the bigs are going to bring tomorrow as long as the guards continue to have that consistency. And Connecticut's just not going to have as many possessions as South Carolina. They simply won't because South Carolina is so dominant on the offensive glass. So to me, UConn needs to make up those points by hitting threes and making their free throws. But it's going to be a tall task. All right, Ryan, what are you looking for? I, I think that the key is for UConn is what I'm going to hit your mic apparently too. Uh, I think the key for UConn is what Rebecca just said, which is hitting threes. I think they have to hit threes because I think you could look at the Louisville game and say, hey, you know, South Carolina was able to get what they got from Boston inside. Uh, but Louisville, if they had hit some threes, you probably have a tight game down the stretch, right? They hit one three the entire game. It came with seconds to go. So if I'm Connecticut, I'm looking at that as sort of an encouraging thing and knowing that they're going to need that. I think AZ Fudd is huge in that regard because maybe you're not going to get three threes from Avina again. 
but AZ didn't hit a three last game. So I feel like uh, that's sort of going to regress to the mean in this game. And if I'm South Carolina, I think they probably get a little more from Victoria Saxon in this game after she was in foul trouble against Louisville. That'll be helpful on the boards. Um, and then what Rebecca said, guards making good decisions. You know, just making sure that they, they don't turn it over. Because the only time they really got into trouble against Louisville is when they started turning it over. As long as they don't, they'll, they'll be okay. All right, they are the broadcasting crew, the officiating crew, anything you need. <laughs> they'll be, <laughs> they know the, the rules. Tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. I had no. We will say, the officiating was very good in both semifinal games. Yeah. Very good in both semifinal games. They deserve credit. Thank you. All right, back to you, ladies. I think what Ryan, a diplomat, Ryan right? Ryan is like, <laughs> to the officials. My favorite thing is Rebecca, and she's like, Don's intense, and she has that scowl, and then we cut to her, and Don's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, we're not. Um, it's all loose now, right? She's feeling good. But we're listen, in, in some of those practices, it's it's not loose. It's yeah. intense. But yeah. that's, to go to talk about <laughs> Don, though, what's my favorite thing is she can be goofy with them. And then when she turns it on, they turn it on. Yeah. Like, I think there has to be a balance there. Like, her players know that she loves them. She can joke with them. She's on their level. But then when it's time to turn it up, she'll turn it up. Yo, I, so we're sitting in that media, right? And I'm, you know, we're just asking the girls different questions and stuff. And I'm like, who's the one that brings, like, the levity to the group? Like, who's the one that in serious moments makes everybody laugh? And they all just deadpan were like, we don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like in Don, serious moments, seri yeah. Don said left. this is the most serious team that she has ever coached. Talking about se talking about seriously being good. Um, we had been talking about the guard play, yes, but specifically Zaya Cook. And I'm gonna pat myself on the back because why not? I'm wrong all the time. But Zaya had a fantastic tournament last year, right? And we were sort of waiting on her to have her coming out moment. It feels like we got that last night against Louisville. She was fantastic. She was, but I think all season long, when you have, you finish the season with a fantastic tournament, you expect the same the next time coming in. And when you aren't getting those same mm -hmm. results, you start pressing or you start doubting yourself. Saya Cook got here to Minneapolis, really it happened in Greensboro, and she settled in. Yeah. And she said, you know what? It all doesn't rest on my shoulders. You have a great team around you. You have a lot of talent. And she realizes she doesn't have to make spectacular plays. She just has to make the right plays, and that's what she did yesterday. I'm going to go old school because people forget about the mid-range game. And she, to me, Zai Cook, is one of the best at the mid-range game. Sometimes what happens as a guard, and I shot a lot of threes, but you <laughs> fall in love with but the three balls. Too. Yeah, I was going to lock some people up now. But you, <laughs> you, <laughs> fall, yes, you fall in love with the three ball. And I think when Zaya Cook is at her best is when she's showing how she can score multiple ways there. Well, my favorite play of the game against Louisville was when she went around the screen at the block and just kissed it off the glass, right? Looking for different ways to score. Not set, that was that was, right yeah, there, that it. was it. There it is. <laughs> wow, it's like we're in sync here. I don't know, was that Jocelyn? Who did that? Beautiful. But that was my favorite play of the game because just looking to score in different ways, looking to get Get easy bucket. She was four of eight from the field. Great shots, great decision making from Zaya Cook, and it should look easy for her. That's how easy the game should come to her when she's not pressing. When I talked to her at the beginning of the season, she said, I just want it so bad. Yeah. I just want it so bad. And she said it's hard to balance trying to be a killer because coach wants her to be a killer, right? Right. While also being loose and being comfortable. It's a tight line to walk. I can't even imagine, right? But I think it's difficult, but she has found it. She has found that killer, but also that balance where it's easy. Well, she has found a way to let the offense come yes. to her. So she's a rhythm shooter. So when the ball goes pass, pass, and then comes to her, that's the best shot for Zaya Cook to knock it down. Then when she hits a couple of those, watch out. Because yes. she, hey, she might get a Sports Center highlight. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's going to be on Sports Center. If, you know what, by the way, I work on Sports Center, so let me just give you a little cheat. If you run across or at a game with a fantastic play and you tweet at us, this should be on Sports Center. There's a good chance it might end up on Sports Center in our top 10. I'm just saying, there's a little cheat code for you. I don't cut the video, but it is what it is. Zaya told us she just needs to do the little things, right? She doesn't want to take possessions off. She wants to make her layup. She wants to be a good teammate. She wants to lock down defensively. Again, coming off of what was a tough tournament, right on the stat sheet for her. Fantastic game for her in the semifinal as they get closer and closer to the national championship game. Let's talk about who everyone on South Carolina calls the mother of the group, Victoria Saxton. 
Saxton, to me, has always been the player that has absolutely complimented Aaliyah Boston. I called them two bookends because sometimes South Carolina offense, even if those guards are missing shots, because Saxton is so diligent on being the best rebounder, she is considerably. And she can electric slide. She can electric slide, <laughs> but she's one of the best offensive rebounders in the game because she tracks the basketball through the vision of her eyes. She's going to see and put herself in a position, but she does the work before the shot is taken. Right. It's just kind of like before you want a, a post speed. What are you going to do? I'm going to get position before the pass gets there. She takes that same mentality on the rebounding side. Well, it's like having a little cheat sheet because Victoria Saxton post up strong so that if the guard shoots the ball. She already has rebounding position. Yeah. And let me tell you something. You watch tomorrow, Victoria Saxon, as she's posting up, that post up also becomes a screen for the guard. They go right <laughs> off her and have that open lane. But she works so hard. And I talked to Vinny, I said, where do you get that energy, that extra ump to be able to continually, night in, night out, go get rebounds? She pointed to her chest. She said, it comes from my heart. Mm -hmm. She said, I love to do the things that probably everybody else doesn't want to do. And I said, well, you know, is it in your DNA? She goes, oh, yeah. I get that from my mama. Because, you know, her yeah. mama played at Alabama. She said, my dad is calm and cool, so I'm a complete combination of the two of them. Yeah, she said her mom was mean, and I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little mean in you, for sure. And it comes from the heart, and I love that, but it also comes from her body and her athleticism, her yeah. second bounce off the floor. She can jump and then her feet just tap the floor and she's able to explode back up to get some of those rebounds. I think her athleticism, her length, the effort, her wingspan. So you put all that together and then you add the heart that she has, it is unreal to try and stop. And she really gets the ball at its high point, which makes it really impressive. GMs in the WNBA need to look at Come Victoria Saxon. Or presidents. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wink, wink. I'm just saying. Wink, wink. I, I, there's so much. There's so much that he can say, but wants to say. You called her the cleanup woman, right? Is that sort of a good way to describe? Cleanup that? woman, and then Coach Staley says low risk, high reward. Yeah. Because she's going to. You're not worried when she's on the floor. She's going to do the right thing all the time, and she's going to tell everybody else what they're supposed to do as well. When Aaliyah Boston and Zaya Cook were out with USA Basketball, Victoria Saxton held it down for the team. Victoria Saxton led them through their summer workouts. She's such a big piece to this team, and, and it goes unnoticed unless you really know the game because the little things that she that she does is really, really solid. Well, you, you got to have energy plays, and she's an energy player, and the fact that she's doing it over and over and over again. I, you know, you always like bigs who like to run the run, rim run. Yep. And that young lady, she is as athletic as any post player that we've seen. She can get, I bet you she can get from baseline to baseline in less than four seconds because she is a player that is hunting for that rim. And I love it when she also is comfortable in taking that high post shot. She has a nice mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. And so now you're seeing this young lady adding layers to her game and not just, hey, she's planning on the, uh, planning on the block. Dawn is moving her around as well. We talked about the rebounding. We talked about her running the floor. But y'all, she got some of the meanest blocks oh. in <laughs> the game this season. Yep. She can get up and swat that stuff to the third row. You know what else, too? She can move her feet on the perimeter defensively. That's she can true. defend guards. They can switch with her. She can slide her feet, and then because of her wingspan, she can still contest shots. She's not getting beat off the bounce. No. But if they try to go and drive by her, she's, she's coming <laughs> from behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. coming from behind. I would let them go by on purpose if I was Victoria Saxon. Like, OK, oh, missed Send that. Them. Just kidding. Got you. <laughs> Good luck. Just so she could set him up. Hey, um, Pools. Wait, I'm going to go back to that. How how fast could you get from baseline to baseline right now, Nikki? Me? Right now. Me with, yeah, with, with those, these with bum knees? With yeah. these bum knees? About, it's, she goes four seconds. I'm on, it takes me 40. 40 seconds. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Look at the mouth of Gabe here for a minute. What about you, CP? Baseline to baseline. Well, let me get the keys to my car. Okay. So you're going to drive it? Uh, yeah. What about you, Andrew? I know. Oh, my gosh. This right. one. Look, yeah. she's literally judging it right now. She's uh. like, I think I could probably do it in four. No, she's saying, how fast did I do it yesterday? Right. <laughs> or, this <laughs> morning. Or, or this morning. Or this morning. Yesterday? Yeah. I, think I, could do, I think I could get there in six seconds. Six seconds. Okay. Baseline, baseline. Six seconds. That's your fight in weight? Like, that's you, that's you. That's my best. And then I need no. three days and then no. to do it again. No. <laughs> <Remember>? <laughs>
you, young lady you. played for Pat Go Summit. Dodd. So I know in those down and backs, uh, you had to come across in 10 seconds. Yes. So you probably hit that line in five seconds. Uh, but see, I gave myself a second because I'm okay. a little washed now. So okay. Let's, we're going to go sit. <laughs> come on, Dodd. That's it. <laughs> I hey, absolutely hey. love that Don is just so loose. But please, please don't get it twisted. Uh, they had a close practice, and it did not look like this. They are about that business, right? Let's get down to business, and this is us, too. Don't know if we can sing it. So we hey, have to I'm going to bring it back. Here we go. Here we go. Uh -oh, I'm, coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming to you. Oh, oh, I'm oh, coming to you. Oh, I feel it. Oh, it's coming uh, to me. Uh, it, uh, uh, bring it back. Bring it back. Uh, They're loving it. <laughs> they think that we are fantastic dancers. Um, as long Carolina. as I'm sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's, so, so let's, talk, let's talk about this sort of the house that Dawn Staley built. It's interesting because we've been having these conversations about, obviously, how she turned around the South Carolina program. But I've heard a couple of people, not, not anyone on this, on this desk, but I've heard people say, you know, I think Dawn still needs another championship to sort of solidify herself amongst those programs that are consistently at the top. After winning in 2017, what do you think it would do for her already established legacy to secure this championship tomorrow night? I think that it helps her get her face on the Mount Rushmore of women's basketball. Yeah. In order to get there, you have to have multiple championships. Yeah. I was the first African-American woman to win it, but I only won one and I got out, I went to the pros. Dawn has already won one. For her to do it again and to have two, I, then you have to, it solidifies her place in history forever. It's kind of like when you, you win one, you want more. You, you want another one and another one and another one. And the culture that she's building is that when you come and play, for South Carolina and you put that jersey on, you are playing for championships here. It's, it's, it, yes, it's great to get to the Final Four, but as you know, as a competitor, you want to win it all because that's something that no one can ever take away from you that at that moment, you were the best team in the country. It doesn't matter what everybody else's record was. It doesn't matter what anybody else has done. When you cut down those nets, you were saying to everybody that, I'm the best. I am the best, and you can't argue that. You cannot argue the individual awards that somebody receives. It, it, this is a team. That, this is a team sport. Five on five. It's a team sport, and th and she has shown that she has demonstrated. I'm sorry, not shown, demonstrated that that's the culture she's built for South Carolina. What I think it shows too for South Carolina is how it's really building and from the foundation up, right? So you win a second one and think about a player like Destiny Henderson who came in as a freshman and maybe wanted playing time but had to wait her turn or all the all the talented freshmen or talented recruits that can come in and say, hey, I'm a part of something that I can win a championship with and it might not be my time right now, but if I keep working under Coach Staley and in this program, the championships will come. It might not be back to back to back years, but she can win with multiple teams. She can win with multiple recruiting classes. It, it's really, it's remarkable. We talk about some of the comparisons and being on the Mount Rushmore, right? Car Vanderveer's on there. Gino Ariam's on there. If she was to win the national title tomorrow, she would join Gino as the only head coaches to be the head coach of gold medal Olympic team and then win a national championship the following year. All she does is win, 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 no matter what. Uh, it's, it's important to her, and I think it's important to her and was important to her team. They talked a lot about getting over that hump and past the final four heartbreak from a year ago. They were able to sort of get that off the list by getting past Louisville, and now they feel like they can truly focus on winning their second title, their first since 2017. What I love about her as well is that she's also Don Staley, but a little bit deferential. She's talked about the fact that you know, she thought Asia Wilson, whenever people try to give her credit for what yep. she's done with that program, she'll be the first to say, I mean, I did have an Asia Wilson. And while I thought she was a once in a generational player, now I've got a Leah Boston as well. So again, she recognizes not only that, but also the South Carolina fans, many of whom are here in the building with us today. Holly, Holly Rose actually standing by with Don Staley for more. Well, Donna's breaking it down with her team right now. I'm going to let her break it down and end the practice for everybody, and I'll walk in and grab her. Go, 
Coach Staley, you're breaking it down. You almost hit that half-court shot right there. You've got a pretty good arm on you still. You know, I, I got a lot of practice at it. I work at it every day. Every single day. You know, you guys break the huddle right there, and, and the thing that you say is together. How has this group reconnected after your last loss and really gone on a beautiful run? The, the, the strange thing is when you take a loss in a game, you, you tend to question everything about you. What we did was we just worked on, we just, we just talked about what we are good at. And we're not going to forget about that. We're a very good basketball team that had a bad quarter. We paid for it. Well, now we find ourselves in a national championship game. You know, you have been such a great player. You've coached at every level. You are an Olympian, a gold medal winning coach as well. And here you are on the brink of a second national championship. What is it about you that you're appreciative of that you think makes you great inside for these moments? Um, I, I really love the game of basketball. Like every, every fabric of me loves everything about our game. And, and the game has been a, a tremendous gift to me that is the overflow is incredible that um, I'm going to use my last times coaching this game, loving up on our players and being a dream merchant for our players. I love the phrase you use, a dream merchant. And for all those fans in here right now, so many little kids, young women, young little boys, um, what is a dream merchant and what is the great responsibility you bear as the coach of this team? A dream merchant is someone that's just dedicated to helping others follow their dream, see their dreams, check off their dreams, and that means that there's good times, there's bad times, there's ugly times, but it's consistent with helping them achieve their, their dreams. So um, my players, I know that I get on their absolute last nerve, um, but at the end of the day, look where we are. We're standing here on center court, being one of two teams left, playing on the last day of college women's basketball, and this is what it's all about. It's such a beautiful thing, and I know these fans are all excited to be here and watch your players. Let's talk a little bit of ball before I let you go. You played UConn earlier this season. It was in November, it was early, but what were some takeaways from the game that you can build on and you can adapt? What we, we took away from it is, um, um, I, I think that was the start of us playing the type of defense that we need to play, and it catapulted us into being a, a, a really great defensive basketball team. We also take the fact that we, we found ourselves down 8 to 20 and fought our way back, and we just lean heavily on our ability to defend. Um, such a good, potent offensive basketball team that hopefully we'll, we'll continue that trend and, uh, and, and be here hoisting the trophy. Um, about 36 hours from now, right? You know, usually in moments like this, it takes a special player, somebody elite to do something special. You have one on your roster. I'm calling her consensus all everything. Aliyah Boston won every major award and she deserves it. What does she have to be for you to win a championship? We, we always speak about habits. Aliyah Boston just has to be, uh, showcase the habits that she created all season long and that is her being her dominant self and, and everybody else, they just gotta do what they've done. We can't change who we are. Um, now that we're here at the national championship game, we just gotta, we gotta focus in and be who we have been all season long and let the chips fall where they may. All right, last thing before I let you go, I see so many young faces. I see teams here with their coaches. Um, what do you have to say to young people who want to succeed at this level as a college basketball player? What, what is it that you're looking for and their parents need to be focusing on with them? Strangely enough, I think everybody probably in America, yes, young, has a trainer, okay? You gotta get your trainer to work on the fundamentals. I think sometimes we skip steps and we want to do step backs and we want to do, you know, handle the ball. Ball handling is the single most important thing in basketball. If you're able to handle the ball, you'll be a better passer, you'll be a, be a better ball handler, you'll be a better shooter because everything's directly related to your ability to handle the ball. Spoken like a true Hall of Fame point guard. We thank you, Don Staley. Thank you for being so special. One in a million, Don Staley.
going for her second title, and you think she'd be going for her third. Uh, yeah, Dawn Stanley should be going for her third title. She should have been dancing in 2020, but uh, I enjoyed watching her dance today at <laughs> Open Practice. She has certainly been dancing. Will she be dancing her way to her second title? We will certainly see on the other side. There she is on the other side. We'll check in with Monica McNutt at Turning Town, and we'll talk to the new head coach at Texas A&M, Joni Taylor. Stick around. All access practices are really just beginning.